By Glob's name, Ken, I ought to put a proximity alert on you. Ken looks slowly towards the origin of the shrill shriek. I is dead set forward until his head was perfectly aligned at Ball. Oh, what's up? Ken asked, of the slowly calming Ball. Ken is like a different person once you get in talking. He animates like a sleeping robot. That may sound endearing. It is not. It is creepy. If you saw him in the dark, which I have, you'd be of the same opinion. Oh, nothing. I can just never get over how quiet you humans are, even on solid floors. <laughs> I guess. Humans are just naturally light on their feet. Lies. Filthy lies. He weighs triple a bowl's weight. He should be stomping and shaking the whole floor while he walks. Did you get my mail on your way up? Ken's face lit up into a polite smile, all his teeth showing and eyes open to their fullest. He twisted his left arm violently and at sharp angles, each movement before the next in a gruesome show of flexibility. He placed his hand on the small pouch he kept attached to his back and pulled out an envelope, never once breaking eye contact with Bol. His arm journeyed back blindly fast and stopped when it was perfectly extended, small cube in hand. Sure did, and I got you a little something while I was down there. He reached into his pants pocket and pulled out a bar of chocolate. He lobbed it to Bol, who caught it. Bol's eyes lit up. Whew, I could kiss you, Ken. Ken gave a hearty laugh and sent a flying kiss to Bol before walking out, his face going blank. They all love Ken. They think he's just been a normal, average, well-meaning, well-mannered human. But I know he's not. I know it. I've seen it. I saw it once on my way home. I had to take a different route due to a hover car engine becoming a ball of plasma on the main road last year. Some punks were racing them at night, and one too many overclocks later, the cooling system just couldn't handle it. The whole maglev system got fried, and they're replacing it now. I had to take a detour. And I saw Ken while I was stopped. He was smiling, not like he usually does. It looked calmer. His lips were just barely curved upwards. His eyes were relaxed. I could almost hear his footsteps echoing in the quiet evening. Then he spotted me, and I thought I was going to meet my ancestors. He just smiled at me. Not his normal smile. No, just a small smile. Then he kept walking like he had never seen me. I went home and it clicked. I saw it all. The truth. He was doing it on fucking purpose. All of it. He was as normal as one can be. Well, aside from the sick satisfaction he got from tormenting co-workers who were unaware of human norms. He has been acting the same while in the office. He never wavers in his act. Not when others are around. Last month, me and him were by ourselves in the office by coincidence. At one point, he looked around with his dead eyes. Spotted no one except me. Then he smiled again. His face became alive and he turned on some music from his workstation. Then he started dancing. His steps reverberated with a deep bass along the walls. He stretched and stood taller than I'd ever seen him before. He went to get coffee. And he had turned into a completely different person. No. Species. He wasn't human as the rest of us knew humans for. No. This treacherous cretin was something different. Something natural. Then he walked to my desk, sipped his coffee, and with the most sympathetic and calming voice told me, No one will believe you. Then he sat down at his desk and continued humming and tapping to the music. Little does he know that I've been planning, making schemes of my own, I was consulted on possible new hires, and saw a human among the possible hires. I knew that I would only have to have another human to reveal the absurdity of Ken. Just one crack, and the facade he'd been building would fall like a pile of dry sand. 
Oh, Ken has been lovely around the office. I believe this other human would be a great addition to our ranks. And I believe it would just be wonderful if Ken had another of his kind to converse with. My insides churned with the insidious lie that I had spouted. I was not made for lying, but against Ken, I would go against my very nature. He has been great indeed. Even Ken really took a liking to having another human on board. Thanks for your input, and between you and me, everyone said the same of Ken, so no need to be embarrassed about it. Did Ken not see what another human would do to his efforts? of terrorising and traumatising the office. Each and every day I watched the rest of my team getting harassed by Ken, and none of them even knew what was being done to them. But I knew this would all stop soon enough. Finally, I could finally have vindication for all the times I got scorned for speaking ill of Ken. Then the blessed day arrived. I was shining like a star, and so close to exploding into a supernova, that's how excited I was. But then I felt a disturbance in the force. Out of the very corner of my eye, I saw Ken smirking at me. I felt cold. The lights dimmed and I could barely see. Some of the more easily frightened started making a ruckus. I could see a lanky, bipedal form stalking towards the middle of the group. It was slowly and quietly hobbling towards the middle of the pack. Chills ran down my spine as I saw Ken holding a light switch in his hands, now that my eyes had adjusted to the darkness. He was grinning wildly again, but it was real this time. There was joy behind those calculating eyes. And then the lights turned back on. And then the scream started. And then I saw Samantha for the first time. Her face was as cold as stone. Her eyes completely blanked as she slowly turned her head towards the nearest person. And then her face animated, as she started speaking with venomous glee. Ouch, my ears! What happened? Everything just went dark and I tried to walk towards the noise. Is everyone alright? Ken had corrupted this one as well. There were two of them. And they were doing it on fucking purpose!